Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining. Let's get a bit more light here. I'm super prepped. All right. Greetings. I hope you're all feeling well. If you are feeling better than a zombie vaguely animated by caffeine and determination, and by determination I mean more caffeine, uh, then you feel better than me. Um, welcome to another stream where we were meant to be doing CL Simdi, but as we'll go into in a second, that might not be happening. In fact, it's very likely that won't be happening for reasons. Um, I will address something in the chat. Actually, yeah, let's do let's do things in the right order. We have a system here. So, good evening to Darius, uh, Duke Boots, Elevator Simulator, uh, Guillaume, Infinisil, Kid, Pomnapimp, and uh, Redion, R Primus, and Shortney. Sean T? One of those. Hello. Um, audio and video, okay, thank you. Oh, so, yes, we're back. Uh, we are meant to be doing CLCMD. And I thought, you know, it'd be really good, like, we like we haven't done this before, so I can, I can, it'd be one of those times where me going in without knowing anything can be an advantage, because we can just stream the whole learning experience and all that kind of jazz. And I was feeling super tired, and so I kind of went, oh, fuck it, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to have a look before I got on the stream and talk to you guys. Um, and it's kind of just as well I did, because it got, might be saving us a bit of time on the stream. So basically, all I've done so far is I um, created a little project um, called Play With CL Simdi. There's nothing in here yet except this ASD that actually has changed. Um... And all it's doing is depending on CL Simd. This has not ended well. So if we do QL quick load play with Simd, we start hitting errors straight away. Um, so it's, there are things that are just not matching up between CL Simd and how SBCL currently is. Now some of them I can kind of understand. Um, some of them are things like, yeah, a, a, array row major index is no longer an SB impl. Um, it's in another package. Um, but then, and like we can we can tweak that. And I started hacking away at Seal Simdi before the stream just to kind of get everything updated. But I started hitting. Let's just actually, I will just drop in the hacks that I did quickly. Apply those hacks, um, and it gets a little further, and then it freaks out uh, with XM00, which is the first um, XMM register that we we're interested in is not of type SBCL TN, um, temporary name. Oh, good, my phone's going off as well. Like a pro, like a pro. Um, so, yeah, if that's going wrong, we're kind of fucked. Um, and it was actually quite confusing, because even the stuff I did change didn't make a load of sense. I mean, the, the first one, that row, um, array, at the row major AREF kind of thing, um, that was just in a different package, it's moved. But then there were things like load w. Now, okay, so let, let's step back. I um, I had this issue on the version of Lisp I had installed, but it was a slightly older version of SBCL. Now we are on um, version 1.4.13, which as far as I know, SBCL, um, is pretty current. So we go to downloads, 1.4.13, is the latest 64-bit version we give a shit about, so that's good. I then went and got more beeping noises from my phone, which is getting muted right now. Because fuck you, buddy. What is going on? Oh, it's just telling me I signed in. I really didn't just sign in. That was a while ago. Okay, flight mode sorted. Um, yes, I went and got... The source, well, first I got the binary for 1.4.3, tried that out, had the same problem, wondered if maybe there was some package or contrib or something that wasn't there. So um, I got the source code compiled from source, and we do have things like simd pack available and stuff like this. And, went, and so I thought everything would be cool, but one of the things that was missing was load w. Um, which was meant to be in SBVM. And yeah, it's not there. We try and jump to definition, doesn't know where it is. Um, I've got the source here. And then, so I was gripping for it. I'm just going to speed things up a bit by doing def macro load w because we can see that it is absolutely in the source. And the branch we're on 
is for 1.4.13. In fact, here it is, 1.4.13. That's the release tag So for that. So I am not entirely sure what is up. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, this is what I was trying to do. Just to prove to myself that that is definitely the same as that. Yes, it matches. Like I'm on, I'm, I'm on the source, but this macro I cannot find, even though this is meant to be in SBVM. So I don't really know what the deal is, and I don't know enough about what the compiler does with these macros to know where they should be. But it kind of puts us in a position that if you guys haven't done this before and haven't got any advice of how to do this, we might be a bit screwed for the stream. Um, I got a lovely email from um, Marco, uh, Marco Heislick, who does a lot of uh, high performance compute stuff in Common Lisp. And he recommended this version of um, CL70. It's one of the more up to date ones. It's still been a couple of years since it worked on from what I'm seeing here. So unless I'm missing which, um, unless this is now on Bitbucket or something else, I'm pretty sure uh, Grigio is still around here. So yeah, I, I'm kind of kind of scuppered at the moment, which is quite annoying. Um, let's just see what the comments are saying. Um, how is this episode one? This is a different stream and I count from zero. So sorry about that. This is the, the second um, pile of parens stream. Um, yeah, so yeah, we were going to be looking at some uh, SIMD stuff, but yeah, I, I'm not, um, I'm not sure where we can go with this. I'm, I'm open to, um, yeah, like Pond Pimp saying number of years is not important. 15 year old Lisp code can run flawlessly. Yeah, but that's 15 year old ANSI standard common list, but this is stuff tied right into the internals of the compiler. So that stuff changes fairly frequently and um, as it should. Um, so yeah, I think we're kind of scuppered. I'm, um, if you guys can throw out any ideas in the next couple of minutes, I'm happy to try them. Um, but I don't know what else to try and I don't think recompiling SPCL or stream is going to be much entertainment. There's probably something really simple I don't know about SPCL um, that would explain all of this stuff. Um, but yeah, like we we did we tried uh, SIMD stuff the other week with older an older version of um, SBCL and that was working. So I'm not really sure what the specific issue is this time. If we don't have anything else, um, I could like so I've got the uh, Vario, which is the um, GLSL compiler that I work on. I could hack on that, um, or we could find something else to do. So it's kind of up to you guys what you want to see, um, given that the original plan is kind of buggered right now. Yeah. So basically there's, um, yeah, on, if we go this option, there's a, um, a case where if you're, if you've got, um, data being passed in as an SSBO, and you pass it to a function, which then passes it to another function, it generates some bad code. It ends up putting um, this type, um, which isn't a real type, into the compiled result. Um, so we need to fix up the compiler. And this is something that Mfiano ran into the other day. So it, was all, you know, it would be a good thing to get done for him. And seen as a, hey, that's a good point. While suggestions are coming in, I've got to give you an update. This is the penultimate stream of the year. I will do one more next week, and that is the lot um, until probably mid-January. Uh, the reason is I've got the uh, the game I'm working on is a very quickly approaching uh, when the alpha is meant to be out, and it's taking every hour I've got to get it ready um, for then. So it looks like I might get it finished by the end of December, but as you can probably see, there is <laughs> there's not a lot going on here. I, by the even, by the time the evenings come around, I'm pretty dead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, like the last two weeks and now this week as well, haven't gone really gone as well as I would like. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, putting the Patreon on hold because it's not fair to take money if I'm not really doing what I'm saying I'm meant to be doing. I'm going to stop the streams for a little while. And um, yeah, then I'll be back, back mid-January, most likely. Cyril Popo will be, I will be quite interested in informal update in an informal update too. 
Um, an informal update to what I'm up to or an informal update to maybe a demo. Um, oh, right. Uh, oh, yeah, a demo of the game. Um, no, I'm afraid not. Like, uh, I'm all set up here for the um, on uh, on Linux, and the game does not run on Linux yet, so I cannot show you here. I would have to switch over and all that kind of jazz. Um, I, I could do another tech stream another day um, related to the game, but at the moment it's it's kind of annoying because right now the game feels like ass and the reason is we're just kind of tearing through getting all these systems set up and there's nothing that hides the lag between some server calls and all this kind of stuff so it, it's not at the point i really want to show it but um yeah darius is saying the sad face to not running on linux it will do hopefully eventually because like unity games can be built for linux um but this is the closed alpha so for the very first version we wanted one target and just a like get some of the basic systems of the game tested and like start loading up the back end and seeing how it deals with things um yeah and so then by early next year like kind of marchish time we're going to do a kickstarter and all that kind of stuff and and try and open things up to more people and yeah then things like mac and linux ports would be um straight like goals in that kind of funding round so um so yeah, no Unity setup, no, no on Linux. Yeah, I know they like they are meant. To... See, I saw something some time of getting the editor working in Linux, but that's the thing. Like with deadlines so tight, it's something I'm just not willing to risk. Like if I if I lose two days to setting up and getting all the bugs kind of ironed out for for the editor, oh, I, I just we won't make it. There's just no way. Um... So yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of where I am at the moment. Um, Cyril Popo is saying, oh, "Are you using any common Lisp with this game?" Um, no, we're uh, we're just doing it kind of Unity C sharp thing, and there's there's kind of a few reasons for that. And I I touched on one of the other streams, but I'm more than happy to go over this again because um, obviously you weren't there that time. Uh, the the reason is that while we've got like again, common Lisp is an awesome language but I'm working with a small team of people and I'm the only Lisper there. So if I take away kind of potentially two thirds of, um, of the team's skills, that's a big hit. Also, the guy I work with has like 13 years experience in Unity, so he's a fucking wizard at this point. So it would be like, yeah, it would be a huge hit. Also, the, like the, their, um, some of the interesting stuff is that even when you've got an engine together, like we can we can slowly build up an engine in um in a common Lisp, like kind of graphics engine side, but the content pipeline is just so important. And the fact that you can do that in um in Unity, just like drag things in and like that shit's handled for you, whatever format of model it is, it, it's so valuable. So yeah, so we're really leaning on Unity at the moment. Um and we get a lot out of that. So yeah, it would be lovely to do things in in Common Lisp, and there's some, there's loads and more game stuff I want to do in Common Lisp. Um, but yeah, actually, I kind of I can ramble about some other stuff as well. Like, um, seeing as Ponder Pimp's asking for a, yeah more of an update, um, yeah, there's there's I can kind of tell you what I'm planning for next year because there's a project there I've been really interested in doing. Um, <laughs> fifteen viewers, hello, fifteen viewers, and. <laughs> Sorry, this stream has already gone to hell. Um, okay, so this is like the next year's big goal for me, like my part-time project that I want to do in Lisp is, okay, let's let's wind back a couple of steps. A while ago, I did the, um, I've done a couple of game jams now in Common Lisp. And one of the first things I noticed on the first game I did, which was, let's go find that damn thing. Um, H.I.O. Actually, let's... Um, H I O uh, Lisp Game Jam uh, Spring. It was one of the spring ones back in like 2016 or oh, 2016. There we go. How about that? Um, I think it was this year. Yes, but this is a really bad screenshot of it. Really? Is that love got? It's quite likely. So yeah, I made this little 2D game where you played as a planet. Yeah, you can't see shit here. 
you play as this rock in the center and you're a certain size and basically things that are roughly the same size as you stick to you like and you become bigger and the idea is to just grow your planet so it's kind of like spacey katamari kind of thing um but one of the things i learned very quickly while doing that was like one of the, like we we love the fact that we don't have this kind of recompile loop um that you get in other languages where you have to kind of stop the program recompile to get your new changes and then build up to that state again we can recompile a single function while maintaining all that state which is really nice and we use that all the time um but it was really easy to recreate that loop because what i was doing was i was trying to keep things nice and pure and i'm like oh well like i want to describe at the beginning of each level how many of each kind of planetoid is going to be around um and so i made little lists of that which is like oh yeah like no no state being stored here it's just a little description in a list and then when the level starts it passes um it takes the kind of um the sub list for that level and spawns loads of those things the problem is then like you've just created yourself a recompile loop you have to like stop the game and um like you have to modify like when you modify those kind of declarations of what kind of planetoids would be around like nothing happens because it's just some arbitrary data you have to then restart the level to see the effects or you have to write queries to go and update all the things that already exist and it got really it got really clumsy and it's kind of taught me that there was this yeah these recompile cycles that were very easy to recreate also from then and from um last year on the streams when we were was it last year was it this year i think it was this year actually when we were doing the um the uh, little 2d engine what do we call it that wasn't Mark. What was it? it? Wasn't Bodge, of course, because that's uh, borrowed us. It was something daft. Daft. There we go. <laughs> that's what it was called. Uh, we made our little um, 2D game engine daft, and we were we had to do quite a lot of work um, to get everything to be fairly performant. What we were doing, like, let's just go and find one of the um, scripts. So what we had was something like this. We would define um, actors. The idea is we wanted to be able to just define little actors. And this is like the main, each one has a main loop for that kind of thing. So then what you can do is you can have, let's say a spaceship here. And then when the, uh, the mouse button was down or the pad, the zero button on the game pad was pressed, um, it would spawn a bullet and a bullet is um, was defined up here somewhere. Yeah. And all a bullet does every frame is move forward for. And if it collides with an alien, or if it's no longer in the world, it kills itself. And this was just cool. This came from a, a language, or a la kind of game programming environment I played with as a kid. And it was called Div Game Studio or something like this. And it, yeah, allowed you to write in this kind of semi-actor model style thing. Uh, so I was trying to replicate that. And we ended up having to process, we just had big arrays of these actors and we were processing them very fast. And what I've wanted to do for a while um, is have a, is, I don't know, I'd like to, to make a kind of more data oriented approach to this kind of thing. So I, I looked into entity component systems a little while ago. This was a couple of years ago now. I made a um, little entity component they called i think it was called hasty and it's probably not on here because it's been a long time since i've played with that um let's have a look if it still exists yes um i tried to make this little entity system called hasty which was based on the excellent work by entitas um who are an who were an alternate or maybe still are uh, yeah, two days ago, still are, um, an alternative entity component system for Unity. And they were very cool. They used a lot of compile time C-sharp stuff to make, um, to optimize uh, their entity component system. But it felt really constrained. Uh, but one of the things I did like from that um, was this whole thing of taking the components and packing them tightly in these um, contiguous arrays. And then, for, again, for optimizing um, processing of this stuff um 
Kids asking, is anyone doing any work with CL Vulcan? Yes, 3B is. Um, if you have a look at GitHub 3B. This guy's awesome. This is the one who did so much work on CL Open GL, making that work. Um, yeah, CL Vulcan. Um, and yeah, it's it's been a while since this is updated, actually. Um, no other branches. I'm not sure what else is going on there. Oh, not in this repository. Obviously, that's going to have... Um, just go back to 3B and see if he's got any other Vulcan projects related in this. He was the last person I remember seeing um, doing that stuff. Yeah, it's just CL Vulcan. Interesting. And the Vulcan samples. So yeah, he was working on them. It seems to have gone quiet for a little while. It's natural happens in some projects sometimes. Anyway, so the, the goal that I want to do is I want to be able to have something... I, I want to have... Um, to get a load of data out of the GC... I want to store things um, tightly packed. I want to um, be able to store um, a lot of data in a kind of SOA format. So kind of like um, how the components can end up being structs tightly packed in separate arrays, um, doing that kind of stuff with Lisp data. And I wanted to um, then let you write kind of processing kernels over these um, and then compile those down to SIMD. So basically like some optimized compiley um, CL stuff. So I've been slowly working on this in a variety of forms. Um, I've got Checkmate, um, which is a library for helping people write type systems, um, which is slowly growing. It, it's not in a usable state yet, but it's what I'm slowly, um, slowly developing as I work on tables, um, which is an act the actual project that I'm interested in. Um, this is all basically just notes and designs and stuff right now with a with a couple of um, implementation things. Um, so yes, the goal is to have a statically typed um, like kind of DSL, Lispy DSL, um, where you can write uh, these queries that will run over tables. And so a table is something very akin to a database table. And then the idea is, let's see, how's the best way to show this? Um, yeah, maybe we'll just get the doodle device going and we can talk about this. By the way, let me know if you just want me to switch over to actually doing some code because this is all very uh, this is all very self-indulgent, just me talking about future projects. Um, okay, so I need to go and plug this tablet into my other machine because it's in the wrong place right now. Uh, is it this one? We'll soon find out when I pull it and everything breaks. Come on, where does that cable go? Yes, that's it. Cool, one second. And... All right, that should be up. Hopefully now. Yes. Feels a bit laggy, but... And then... So what I want to be able to do is define big old tables with columns, naturally. And then I want you to be able to say um, that maybe we're storing a bunch of different entities. And they have like a position, uh, which is a VEC3, um, a rotation, uh, which is a quaternion, and, and then a kind. Let's just give it a kind for now. Uh, which is some enum. Um, and then we're going to process, we're going to like write a little um, statically type program that's going to beast over this table and do a bunch of stuff. And all of the data is going to be stored um, out of the GC, so it's not going to affect, like, so basically we're lightening the load in the GC, so GC times take very little, well, take less. Um, and we're going to compile to SIMD because there's a bunch of things we can just know about this data. Um, we make the we make the we have this as if rule um, that whenever you're processing something with one of these queries, it's as if the whole thing is double buffered. So when it, whatever you're reading, 
um, like whatever you write, you're always going to be reading from this original version of the table and you're writing into a new version. So it's like you're copying every single time. Now we don't actually have to do that. We can look at the program and see what things are being mutated and if anything else is trying to read this same table at the same time and we can avoid doing copying in those cases. But the, guy, the idea is these tables are big unordered um, data structures. And because they're unordered, we can reorganize them in memory um, based on the kind of queries you're running and hints that you give to the um, compiler. Um, and this can then optimize the layout of the, um, the objects in there. So for example, this kind, if it's an enum, um, you can then tell it to cluster. And when you cluster on this, it means that say um, the kinds were, let's just say dog, cat, and whatever. <laughs> All, all other animals that have three letters. Pig, there we go. Dog, cat, pig. Um, by saying cluster on um, a kind of enum, um, it will group all of the dogs together, all of the cats together, all of the pigs together. That means then if you write a query, um, which is like um, defun, and one of the things you do is kind of um, do a case, not a switch, because we're in Lisp. Um, uh, case on the kind blah 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 we could when we compile this we can split this function into one version of the function for dogs one version the function for cats one version for pigs and then optimize them separately um, with by knowing that the kind is going to be uniform across all of them so it's basically your your it's like when we're doing shaders you create specific versions of shaders with certain things at, that are uniform for the entire run and then you can optimize more so i want to do that i want to do loads of crazy compiler shit um i want to write a proper optimizing or proper optimizing compiler um that does the kind of transforms i'm interested in so i've been reading some stuff from llvm and all this kind of stuff that's what i want to do over the next couple of years and slow burn and then I want to go back and rewrite um, Daft, our little game engine, using that thing because it's just it would be perfect for that. Um, also, there's a bunch of restrictions I'm putting on the functions that you can write, like you can't have recursion. Um, iteration is done through only map and reduce. And by doing this, um, by locking down how that stuff works and adding these extra um, restrictions. What I want to be able to do is to be able to make it trivial to switch whether this data is on the CPU side or the GPU side and cross compile these to GLSL compute shaders or Lisp SIMD stuff. Uh, so the idea is to make it very easy to basically ask what if this was running on the GPU or what if this was running locally or what if um, this vector three um, was um, packed together like X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Or if there were three arrays of just X's, kind of X, 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 and another array of just Y, 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 another one of Z, Z, Z. Like being able to ask those kind of memory layout questions and thus kind of performance resulting from that, that's something I really want to do. So that's future stuff that I want to do. I obviously also want to keep going on um, Keppel and all of the other projects. So yeah. There's a lot of that. Um, someone's asking something about compiler things. Um, speaking of compiler, do you know polyhedral compilation? No, I don't. Time for me to be. I, I'm a complete noob at this, by the way. Again, talking a lot of stuff, but uh, I've got nothing to back it up yet. Um, I can't type either. Save me, Googles. Especially those involved in nested leaves and rays. Oh, interesting. That's very cool. So yeah, like the syndization stuff is basically what we're going for. But I'm going for quite a dumb thing. Um, because I, I've not done an um, optimizing compiler before. I'm not doing anything very experimental. All I'm doing is putting additional restrictions on. 
Um, and they're the kind of restrictions that just make the writing the compiler a lot easier than all the challenges that LLVM has. And I make a lot of, um, like say that as if rule, as if you're always writing from one uh, region of memory to another and they're never aliased. The fact that you know they're never aliased means that you can do, you can guarantee that you can do certain kind of SIMD operations and things like this. Um, maybe interested in Halide. Yeah, kind of what I want, what I'm actually trying to do is a very, um, like a poor man's version of um, ISPC. I'm getting a link for the Halide line. I should link ISPC as well. Um, I mentioned it on stream before. It's uh, this single program, um, multiple data um, compiler. And it is really cool. Um, the chap who made it originally has a really good blog series on how it was developed. And it's, yeah, it's really awesome. And it's, it's good to see uh, these trade-offs. I'm going to be doing a much more limited version of this. But I still, uh, it's something I still find like a really fun idea. Um, so it's something I want to hack on. Uh, let's have a look. Wow, that went well. What else do I have to allow before I... Oh, no, there we go. Um, oh, nice. Yes, image and array processing things. That's exactly the kind of area. This is definitely not something that needs to exist. Like, what I'm making doesn't need to exist. But it's very much something that, that I want to do because it's it'll teach me a load of stuff. And it's the same in making the uh, Shadem compiler. Like, who really needs it? There's there's not many people who are super interested in doing this stuff in Lisp. Um, but it's really cool. This is awesome, though. I am going to... Yeah. I'm going to keep that around because I will watch that another day. It'll go in my big list of things to watch. So thank you, dude. That is really cool. But, and that sounds super interesting. I just know if I look at this for too long, I'm going to get sucked in and I'm not going to do the stream. So with the absence of other ideas coming out of chat right now, I'm blaming you. Um, I think what we'll do is just hack on Vario for the rest of the stream because I've been yakking for about half an hour and that is too much um, to have without any real um, progress. So let's go into Vario. Let's pull down... Oh, this is the release version. Let's go into master and pull that down. Um, and then go and see what um, we have here. Are there any other things? Yes. So the thing that we need to look at is this SSBO arg issue thing. If I check out that branch and just make sure I've got a laptop over here and I just want to check that I didn't leave any unstaged changes over here. Code, list, the works, Vario. Da, 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 da. Yes, I did. Um, what have we got here? Super fun stuff. One second. For stream. It's really dumb. That just turning around and writing on here, I suddenly stop talking. Where it, All I do all stream is look at this screen, and I'm talking most of the time there. Okay, right. So that's pushed. Let's get that down, and we will start playing. <laughs> They're not the best commit messages. Uh, get him. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at the problem. There's, um, I've got some example code down here and I'm explaining to myself what the actual problem was. Um, here is an example. Here are some functions that do not currently produce good stuff and some that do. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave this how it is at the moment. Okay, so if we go QL, quick load, Vario tests. Oh yeah, I've got a new version of SBCL now, so everything has to recompile. Let's see if I have... There's nothing that in, on this set of libraries that should have any issues, hopefully. All right. 
npm package Vario.tests. Let's pull this over just a little bit. And then let's move, just change the layout here a little bit because it's going to be a struggle to read otherwise. Okay, so the general idea um, in Vario is that um, you define structs to um, deal with layout of data. So if I jump up here to this struct, um, we can see that it's defined, it's called some, um, it's called some data. Let me just, just see another one on my way. Right, we've got some data up here um, and it has one slot called ints and that ints is an array of a thousand integers. That's just the type. Um, and when you've defined, let's see if we can do this. Yeah, when you've defined um, the struct, you can then say that, hey, actually, this is gonna be an SSBO um, and the layout is standard 140 or standard 430, whatever you like. Now, I think SSBOs might have to be 430, so I'm not sure if that's valid. That's another bug to check another time. Um, I thought I already had checks for that though, so I'll trust the compiler more than my memory right now. Um, but there are some cases that we're getting rather strange things. Let's look at an example where it works. So, um, foo1 is apparently okay. Let's have a look at the resulting code from that. And, oh shit, yes, because I've got some changes. Okay, how is the best way to get through this? Um, I've got to be able to show the problem because otherwise this stream is just going to be completely worthless um, woof okay so yeah we're doing force push and all kinds of shit in this it's good that nobody's using that branch okay let's look at this commit because this one will show the issue at least. Quick load again, and let's bring it over here. Let's get back into tests. Let's recompile foo and let's run foo and hopefully, right, okay. So this is how it should look. Um, we can see here that what we have is we've got a uniform being passed in, um, which is using that struct, but we're also telling it that it's an SSBO. And then we have a local function, which takes um, a struct of that type and just gets one of the integers out of the array. We then call this function passing in the uniform and all is merry and bright. But there's an interesting thing. SSBOs are not really structs at all. Um, they're just a layout of, they're a, de a declaration of how the data is laid out and you have this name. So you can write the data dot um, the field name and that's fine. But ints isn't a variable. You can't, sorry, um, the data isn't a variable. You can't pass it around anywhere. Um, so when we're doing this, we're passing the data to this function um, this isn't something that um, GLSL supports, so our compiler needs to be able to handle that. Um, the reason this is nice to have is it means you can define a function that works on structs, and if you make an SSBO based on that layout, or if you make um, a UBO based on that layout, or if you just make a struct um, from that definition and pass it to a function, it'll compile out to different versions of the function that handle the case you're interested in. Um, What's going on? <laughs> I've missed something here. Ken Hober. Uh, really, uh, really great to have you. I'm sorry the stream isn't um, as was advertised on Reddit, but um, it is really nice to have you here live instead of on YouTube, which is really cool. Um, what was Darius saying? <laughs> I'm being mocked. 
So we see in the case, because we can't pass the data around as a variable, um, what the compiler has done is it's made a new version of the blah function, which doesn't take any arguments, and it uses the SSBO directly. Um, I wonder if I can show the case where, let's just do let who is make blah. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be allowed. Maybe you have to specify all the arguments. Um, well, let's just see. No. No function make blah was found. Oh yeah, no, it's called make some data. That's why. This is how much brain power is left. Not much. Um, when ah oh, yeah, it doesn't exist when called with no arguments. Um, so it's expecting an array of. Um, yeah, it's expecting an array of a thousand integers. So make array uh, 1000 of element type int. Does that work? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. So yes, this is how you make integer arrays in GLSL. Um, if we ignore that giant mess that it's made, you can see now that there are two versions of um, blah being called here. Blah which takes an argument and blah which doesn't take an argument. And if we go up here, we can see that it generated this um, when you actually have a struct, a real struct of this kind, and it generated this one uh, for the SSBO, which only has that type according to the Vario compiler. So, that is that. But, um, we have cases which aren't so good. If we look at foo2, we see some problems. Um, what we have here is we have a second function um, that is calling blah. And it is apparently taking um, an x of this type and then calling blah with it. Um, but this function is never used and we get some nasty artifacts. We see that we get um, a version of the function that takes some data, but we don't have the declaration of that struct. If we go up, um, actually, if we if we bring back our <laughs> disgusting version here, uh, foo1, we can see that the compiler added the, um, where is the definition of struct, actually? Is that not there? That's going to be a second bug if it's not there. God damn it. Okay, so it didn't add the, add the struct definition either. That is shit. Huh. Surprised this hasn't come up sooner, actually. Okay. All right, well, that's the second part of this bloody bug. Okay. What it's meant to do, it's meant to have added um, the struct definition. That's very strange. If I just run um, 5 a.m. run test, ready? Come on, there's got to be run for one test. Okay, run. Um, test spec. Okay, so it'll be, um, I don't know, UBO0? Is that how it works? Yeah. Oh, okay, but we can't see the result. That's rather annoying. Um, okay, let's just take this and oh, blast! Then grab the GLSL code for this and see what we get. I'll be very surprised if we don't get the um, struct definition here because I've had a set of tests that were meant to be covering this for ages. Okay, oh, no, this is the same case. We've got the UBOs again. Um, so this is showing that UBOs and SSBOs will work. Where are my regular struct tests? Here we go. What happens if I... Come on, there's got to be something. Yeah, some of these down here. Soon we should have some... this. Let's test this and call GLSL code on it to get the resulting code. Right, yeah, here we go. This is what we're meant to get. 
you're meant to get a struct definition and then you're meant to get like uses of that struct so there were a couple of problems in that other code which is very annoying because that wasn't quite what I was aiming for but oh well but the the general test case that I'm, I'm going to start with is foo3 here and what we've got is um, we have a call to a function passing in an SSBO so we know that it can't actually pass the SSBO so it's going to have to create a new version of this function and that function calls this function passing in the um, data which is definitely an SSBO um, so this is going to have to have a new version as well but what it does and it get, gets part way there it generates this which is correct this is the correct code but it also emits this code as well um, which is wrong because we're not using we don't have any instance of the struct sum data we only have something which is an SSBO which is using that struct as a layout so we've got to find out what to do. And the reason that this is happening is that it goes through and it's compiling things um, in a kind of naive walking the code order. And it when it compiles this, it goes, oh, here's a function that takes some data, cool. Um, and then it sees that something uses it, which means this thing needs to be included in the result. Um, so it does include it in the result, it includes it here. Um, and it's only later on down here when the function call is um, and it's passed in an SSBO that the compiler then goes and generates these two versions. So um, we need to basically pass back. The, the, the problem is that the um, code that says whether a function needs to be included in the resulting source is wrong um, because we can't just look at see a call and say this thing is definitely called um, with these arguments because some of them might be removed because they might be things that can't be represented in GLSL. So what we're going to do, what's time, 247, good, lost time. Um, we are instead going to have the compiler return as it's compiling um, functions, it's going to accumulate all the functions that were definitely called inside that function um, and it's going to pass that back up the compilation stack and then when we compile main um, what we should have at the end is a big list of functions that were actually called. So yeah. And if we can do this, it can make Mfiano happy because um, his um, shader stuff in his Project Shadow, which you should check out, um, is it relies on Vario underneath and this is a case that is breaking for him currently. And in the process of this, I'm also going to have to find out why something um, included, use, included a function which used some data but didn't have the declaration for some data. It's just annoying. So there are bugs. So if I jump back now to this thing's crap. So if we check out the issue again, I just want to have a look at what my last changes were because I started working on this but then I, basically I, I've been working on Lisp while I was on a train so I had I had like a couple of hours there and back and that's all the Lisp time I've had in the last week which is why I'm not doing the Patreon thing because it's just not fair like two hours a week is nothing um, to be taking people's money for so let's have a look code objects da 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 Yes, yeah, so this is the function that makes um, an instance of compiled, and compiled is a chunk of compiled code or and surrounding metadata and stuff. Um, so whenever a an expression is compiled, it results in one of these compiled objects, and it has a bunch of stuff in there. It's got a bunch of expressions which are moving their way up to the nearest uh, GLSL block. Um, we have the return types, uh, the types of anything that's being omitted from like geometry shaders, um, lists of types that have been used so far, um, stem cells, which is another uh, Vario feature, um, any out of scope arguments. So yeah, like if you were using basically any lexically captured value um, ends up in here uh, so that when we get up to compiling the top level of that, well, the top of that function or the root of that function, 
Uh, then we know to add our arguments to the GLSL function. Place tree, this is, uh, this is um, me propagating place information so for use for setf. Pure is whether this thing that is compiled so far is pure all the way down. And then called functions is what I'm currently working on. So all I've done is I've added um, an argument up here uh, called called funks. It's nil by default and we know if it's been set. And all we do is we assert that it's been set. So basically this is gonna cause, cause all of my code in the compiler to break because nothing currently passes in this keyword argument. And so then I'm gonna have to go and handle all those errors everywhere. And that will force me to look at all the places it's called and evaluate what I need to be passing in. And we'll see how that goes. It's just a strategy to get me to look everywhere. Uh, this is, so this is the same stuff in the same file. And then this is the definition of that compiled class. So all I've done here is added this. Um, and then we've got the tests we've already been looking at. So that's actually it. So all I've done so far is break the project. So that's good. Let's go break it again. Fario tests, ba ba ba. Yeah, Michael's not even here today. Shame. But it'd be really nice if I can get this done and have that for him before Christmas. Because if we don't do it in... in <laughs> if I don't do it soon, I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to do it. So it would be really good to be able to... Early Christmas present for Mfiana. Okay, so back to Vario tests. And now when we try and run Foo3, which is our example, things break. Because it's saying the assertion is, is has failed. And the assertion is in this function, but it was called from here. So this is the thing that, so let's abort that. This is the function that, um, yeah, takes a variable access and turns it into a, um, a compiled object. Well, this is just handling a variable. So yeah, it's called called funks. That's what I need to remember. Doot, doot, doot. Um, this is just dealing with variables, so there's no function being called here. So called funks is nil. And now we can go back to the REPL and call it again, and it's going to break somewhere else. Compiling a let. Um, now, there definitely could be functions here that are used. In fact, we can probably copy how t um, it accumulates the used types. Um, because a let has a bunch of things going on it, on in it. Um, there's the okay, so it's accumulating the type objects and any of the used types in the value. So this is a let of a single. I think this is like a let one. So it's it's binding one uh, value form to one name. So it's kind of like just a to b, right? So that it's only only one of these. So rather than like having A and C as D, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So only ever one. Which means the only way there could have been a function called is if it was called um, from here. This is always going to be a symbol and potentially a type declaration. Um, so this would be the only place a function could be called, or in the body, of course. Um, is there a body? How does the body work in this? Compile let. Um, has a name, a type spec, a value form, and an environment. So it's almost like um, yes, this is the actual special form that handles lets, and it's a the, but um. But yeah, this is the place where the body is handled. So I'm going to ignore that. And it seems like this function, this, um, where was it? Compile let. Actually, all it does is um, adds the binding to the, yeah, it's a helper function that's used internally. 
and it only does just adds the binding to the environment and stuff like this. So how do we do this then? So basically then the only function call could be in, um, would be the one that's in the value slot. So it's not the type, it's gonna to have to be the value form. The value form is compiled here um, into the value object. The value object will be of type compiled. Um, so the only thing I really need to do here actually is just go, um, oh, what was it? Can't remember the name of that. Um, called funks, there we go. Is gonna be the called funks of value object. So we just pass it on down. So that's now set and let's go SLDB. I bought that and recompile and just compile again. Oh, apparently that wasn't set. There's another place. What the fuck? Something's a bit screwy here. It's saying that called funks set failed, which means I didn't pass in called funks, but I definitely did, unless I didn't compile that. Pretty sure I did though. Nope, we're back in the same place. So could it be something in lined or something janky like that? Oh no, there's another make compiled right here. I'm an idiot, there we go. Oh yeah, we've got, this is stupid. Okay, so there's a couple of cases there. If there is, if there is a, a value object, but the type of it is ephemeral, uh, which means it's unrepresentable some way in GLSL, uh, then it's this branch. Um, if it's this one, then we do have a value object, and this one is when um, I guess there isn't a value. Um, in which case, called funks is going to be nil. Okay, so now we should be somewhere else. Nope, we're still in compile let. It really has to be that uh, typeify thing, doesn't it? See what's going on. Arsus, welcome. Good to see you, man. Uh, there's copy compiled. Ah, that's probably it. Let's see. Definitely haven't modified this yet. Um, yeah, this is copying a compiled object, so let's just have um, called funks be called funks of the um, thing that was passed in. Actually, we might want to override it, so called funks set called funks. If set called funks, then use the call funks that was passed in, otherwise use the called funks from the object that we're copying. Um, what doesn't it like? Undefined variable compiled. Oh yeah, because it was called code object, that's why. And yeah, that'll do. Hopefully this time we'll be outside of, okay, now we're, now we're getting a crash from somewhere else, good. So compile regular function call, um, that makes sense. Okay, so this is, definitely one of the places we need to add a value. Um, so, yeah, this is interesting. Okay, so, here I wanna do called funks and I need to add a list and I need to add something here and it's going to be I'm trying to remember what kind of data I'm accumulating. I don't think it was just the function object itself. I think I wanted the compiled result um, of this thing. Let's see how that would work. Um, Just for now, I'm just going to take the compiled result of that function and see what happens. Uh, merge compiled called funks is not an owner. Oh, yeah, okay. So, this is I think we need to go and fix merge compiled list now. This is a function that takes multiple 
of those compiled objects and merges them together. Um, so I definitely need to do this. Um, Okay, so this is gonna be slightly similar to that other one where we just go down here. Pooled funks is, let's see how our stuff is aggregated. Okay, so if we do set called funks, whoops. If we've set the called funks, then just pass in whatever, just use whatever value we passed in. Otherwise we want to aggregate together um, all of the called funks from the objects that were passed in. Now I need to know if I actually want to pass this in like this. Because what am I aggregating? All the arguments. That's a good point, because there could be functions um, that have been called in the arguments. Um, so I don't really want to, so I don't want to throw that away. So what I want to do is I want to cons this onto all of the called funks of ours. So we take this function we've just compiled, the result of just compiling this function, and then we cons that onto the front of all of the other called functions that um, were in the expressions that were passed as the arguments to this function. Maybe, we'll see how what happens over time. Foo3, we, we're back in regular function call again, so obviously I screwed something up. Um, there's no method for the applicable function um, compiled result when called with arguments, blah, blah, blah. So apparently this is not kosher. And I don't understand why, because I thought I just saw that up here. Oh, when this is a user function, okay. So maybe that only applies then. Don't really know. Let's see. If it's a user function, then do this. Otherwise, just do this. Is it happy with that? Yep, now we're off somewhere else. Oh yeah, of course, make a ball. We're compiling a literal. There are going to be no functions, uh, function calls in a literal because a literal isn't a function call. Um, and so this is kind of annoying that stack traces are a little incomplete here, um, but we, have, we, can, we can work with it. So it's probably, I'm guessing that these, so compile form is gonna call compile string literal, compile number or compile array literal. And we seem to be always jumping to the same file, which is compile literal. So let's just look at here. We've got make compiled being used a bunch of times in here. Um, so this will be fairly simple, which is called funks nil. Uh, and we're just going to want this all over the place. Okay. We go back to the REPL and run this again. Oh boy, okay, right. So now that compiles. Um, but we didn't exercise that much of the um, of the compiler because we're just running one thing. So if we do run all tests, we can see that a whole bunch of things that haven't that are failing um, with our assertion. So basically we can just start running those and we should be able to find the rest of the places that we need to uh, well, to be fair, all of this kind of stems from make compiled. So the first thing we could do actually to narrow this down quite a bit is just find every place that make compiled is called and we'll check them. So let's just go rep make compiled. There's not a huge number of places. Okay, so this is discard. Discard is not going to be um, calling any functions, um, values, values of void, um, there are no function calls in that, um, what is this, it's large, whatever it is, holy fucking hell, right, make array, yes, make array could have a bunch of function calls inside it because of the 
No, could it? Yes, the initial type. The initial contents would be... Um, could have function calls in it. Ah, uh, yeah, this is horrible. Right, element type, um, initial element. Initial element has to be constant, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that needs to be constant. Um, the initial contents. Well, we actually require the... Right, in our definition of make array inside Vario, um, because it's kind of like... Yeah. It's being as close as possible to the CL one without... Well, whilst it also not being a very good fit for Vario. So it seems to want it to be quoted, actually. Um, it wants it to be constant in some some form. So I don't think we need to worry about function calls inside make array just now. So I'm going to skip that and we'll just let the tests tell us if we missed something important. Um, okay, function for function sets. Okay, this is getting a, a function object. Because one of the confusing things is like um, in common in common list whenever we do something like um, I don't know plus we're kind of referring to a single function we're getting a function object um, but in uh, Vario we have operator like we have so an operator overloading we have um, overloading of functions so many functions can have different can have the same name and different signatures um, so when you do something like this. You know what? What are you getting? It would be. Would this be every single possible plus for all the different types? And the answer in this case, kind of, yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's how we've, that's how we have it uh, defined right now. Is if you do that, it returns a function object that basically represents all the kind of overloaded versions of plus. Um, or if you did foo, it would be all the overloads of foo. And then when you do fun call on this, um, depending on the types of the fun call, then it's going to try and pick the overload at that point. Um, you can also do this, um, in which case you would want to have the correct... Well, actually, that would work fine as well because um, this would just get cast implicitly to a float on the call. Um, but yes, this is also valid inside Vario. So this thing is doing that, but because it's just returning a function object, there are no function calls in that. And so we can do called funks is nil. Go down to here, uh, function for regular funks. What is this? Okay, again, this is the same thing, returning function objects. Um, uint, yes, because um, we don't have a syntax for like strictly unsigned integers inside CL. Um, so this handles that case um, inside for GLSL because you, it's really important to be able to define to like to have a specific unsigned integer. We use that in some of the bit twiddling stuff a lot. Um, compile a fun call. Right. What have we got here? Compile external function returning reference. Um, returning ref ref in this case being oh it's been a while since i've looked at this it's the fact that the external function is not allowed to mutate the environment it was called from we're going to grab the base environment and compile the labels form there we can then extract the signatures we need from this and add them to the final source the duplication will be achieved by the fact that we use external function objects as a key to a hash table oh bloody hell okay um what does returning ref mean though who, who calls this Oh yeah, it's just for external functions. Okay, so I'm not sure what that naming comes from, but whatever. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, this is tricky. What are we looking for here? That was the other thing had the compiled result of func. I'm not sure what that is. Um, compiled, okay, let's just go with, at the moment we're just accumulating a list, so I'm not too worried if the results, uh, the contents are wrong, that's something I can check later, um, or where we'll see later. So I'm just going to put this in here and see what happens. Um, compile bool, 
we've already looked at this. This is all the compile literal things. We've been through all those. Um, code object make compiled. We've already handled that. This is not important. This is in merge compiled, which we've already fixed. Stem cells. Okay, so this is going to be a symbol. There are no function calls involved here. So called funks is nil and we just keep on going. Variable to code object, we've already been here. Make function. Um, these, I think this compact function result, this is odd. Make compiled typeset. This just seems to be void. Yeah, an empty typeset is void. So, or just values. Um, so that's fine. This is try compile arg. This is this. Oh, this is being used for errors somehow. So I'm just gonna let that go. Um, and this has already been handled, and this one's already been handled. Okay, so apparently we've gone through every call to make compiled now. Um, so hopefully there'll be a few less failures. Yeah, now we're down to three failures. Um, so we can go and look at tests. And there are array tests, and it's array four, um, which is down here. And because um, 5 a.m. captures the errors, I want to run it myself here um, and just see where it is that this is having a problem. So this is VS Make Array. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I actually didn't. All I didn't do was didn't put the nil here. That was it. OK, so that one's now fine. And all the tests now pass. So we're no longer, whatever change we've made now isn't doing any harm to our current test suite. Um, we're not using the, the information anywhere. Um, so that should be the case, but. Um, Pondipim is saying, which function mode can help you in long functions in Emacs? Um, what is which function mode? Which function mode enabled? What should I be looking for? Elevator Simulator is saying, um, this reminds me of the time when I wrote a driver for an early DV cam, never tried compiling it until the program was complete. We could debugging your skewer compiler errors. And so, yeah, man. I know that feeling. Yeah, this the thing is like, I'm gonna rag slightly on um, Vario now. It's not a good compiler. It just isn't. It's like my first first compiler that has done anything meaningful, and so there's tons of bad decisions in there. And but but the one thing it does do is because of all the work on it, it works enough to be very useful. Like all of Keckel is built on top of this, and it's been useful to other people. And so I'm very happy with it from the fact that it does something valuable to me. But it's not good in terms of compiler construction. And so I'd like to, like, the next one I do, I want to try and have learned a few things and pile them on. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'll probably, I will make at least a different mess, a different kind of mess when I do the next one. And that, to me, is progress, so that's fine. Okay, so if we go back to our original uh, thing, we've got this which has the issue we are trying to deal with, which is that this definition should not be here. Then I want to now go to um, translate, because this is the actual, um, this, this is what compiles everything. This takes an object which represents the stage, of type stage, and it just pumps it all the way through all these steps and out the other end comes an object that contains this GLSL. So what I want to do 
is around where is it this is actually the bit that um, does the compiling and everything afterwards is post-processing and gathering things to like together in the right ways before making the strings and stuff like this so if I jump there build function main Okay, what comes after compile class? Make post process object. Let's look at that. So the main function is passed in here. So let's just do a break foo. And run this, and then we get a break. And then I press um, capital C, which brings up the. Um, the arguments, it brings up information on this condition object itself. Um, including the arguments that were passed into the error. And this lets me go and get the data that was in there. So this is the compiled function result for the main function. But that's interesting. Um, but this doesn't have, obviously, what we're looking for. because we haven't added that data to this yet. Okay, so we need to go and look at compiled function result and see where that's made. And then we want to take the data we've been accumulating out of the compiled object and store it in here, because it will tell us for each function what all of the functions, um, the, yeah, what are, what are all the functions that this function called? And then vicariously, we're building up a list of everything that everything called. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so back to, right, I've just got to go slime, set, default directory, there we go. Um, code, and my apologies as well to people who like, I know I'm just jumping through a code base I know well and I'm not explaining very much. It's not really a code base, I kind of like, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I'm not gonna try and go through it like it's a sensible piece of code because it's really not. <laughs> but um, I'm open for any questions. I'm, I'm yeah, more than happy to do whatever. And if you want me to switch to something else, if you like say, actually, let's do some Keppel stuff and you want me to switch away from this because it's not great TV or something like that, let me know. I'm happy to do whatever it is. Um, but left to my own devices, I will just keep doing this. So you, you have to tell me. Oh, actually, uh, default directory, I'll set it to Varia. There we go. Now when I do a grep, it's going to be grepping from that directory and because I wanted to look for this. Yeah, save, whatever. Oh, that's actually a good point. We should definitely commit what we've done so far. So all of this is just um, ensure called funks is um, right, fast. Uh, Actually, yeah. Um, good. Right. So I was gripping for something. Yes, I was gripping for compiled function result. So I wanted to find where we make instances of it. Here and here, make function. Okay. Um, let's see what we've got here. This function is big, very big. And it's the one that handles making a regular function. And then the other place that this is uh, used is in making a function with unwraps, which in, uh, like in this case is referring to to unrepresentable types, types that GLSL actually can't represent in source code. Um, and so this is like functions that take functions, functions that return functions, functions that take SSBOs by value and things like this. None of those things um, make any sense in real GLSL, so the compiler is having to handle them. Um, 
we've got a couple of places here. Uh, yeah, so this is the main bit it's called. So what happens to the body? Like, actually, what, what have we got here? This big old hacky mess. Okay, yeah, the, the, the arguments are, uh, and the body is passed in. So then the body is going to be, there's an environment for the body, and then the body code is just the body wrapped in a progon, and then a return. And um, this is a GLSL return rather than a standard common list return because we don't have, we can't just, um, we don't have anything like go to. So we don't get to control, uh, like we don't get to any, ex yeah, we're bound by the control flow of GLSL. So this return is akin to GLSL's return. And all this is doing here is giving you implicit returns in your functions. That's, that's all it is. So we take our new code and then we compile it and we get a body object. So this is the compiled object. So this is where all our data should be that we accumulated. So actually what we'll do is we'll just do this. Not that. <laughs> Something else. Break. Foo again. And the body object. And then we'll go back into the REPL. And do we still have something? No. Okay, so we'll call this. There's foo. Let's look at C again. And here is the compiled object. Um, let's abort that because I'm no longer interested. But we should have called funks as nil. Fuck. Okay. So which function was this? Oh, actually, that might be correct, you know? Because this GLSL here, return ints whatever. This looks a lot like this. Is there a name in here? I guess not. Okay, yeah, of course, this is just the body, isn't it? So it's not going to know the name. But return... Yeah, this variable here with slots temp, that's the variable that with slots has created, I guess. Then we're doing an array access to get the first element. And we're setting it to 10. So that's that line there. So that's definitely blah. And blah actually doesn't call any functions. Um, a ref is a special form because like accessing arrays isn't a function in GLSL. Um, and with slots isn't a function, that all macro expands away. So, yep, that's actually correct. Um, so I shouldn't have done abort because what we're really interested in, what we should say, continue. And then we get the next function. Oh yeah, here we go. If I'd actually looked at the stack trace, it would have told me. Now we're compiling the function ham, um, which is if we go and look, is this function here. This has one function called it, a function called a blah. So let's go in here, and now when we look at called functions, we see that there's one thing. There's this, which is, yeah, which is the compiled result of compiling blah. Yeah, there's the function object for it, and a whole bunch of data. There's the signature. There's all the types that we used inside it. Cool, right, so. So ham is convinced that it has called blah, and that makes sense. Um, but what we want to work out later is that this function isn't actually called um, because this function takes an instance of the sum data struct, and this thing is trying to pass in an SSBO. So this whole block here is going to get replaced with a new version of this, which takes no arguments. So what I want to prove in this thing is that this never gets called, and therefore this never gets called. Um, SLDB will say continue. So here's another function. It's another call to blah. So let's look at UBO again. Yes. Okay. Yeah, look, this is this is a version of blah that takes, if I'm reading this right, yes, raw args and args. This is a version of blah that takes no arguments. 
which is the version that is created by this stuff down here when it tries to pass SSBOs into it. So that's good. And then we'll go continue again. I'm just at the moment, this isn't super useful, but I'm, well, it's just telling me that something is roughly going right. Um, here we can see a version of the ham function, which takes no arguments. Um, so that's good. Let's go have a look at its compiled result. It has one called function in it, and that function is blah, the version of blah that takes no arguments. Yes, good. So that is that is looking promising. And then we get down here, and this is making a regular function called main that takes no arguments. So this is the whole point, is getting down here and finding out what we've got. Now right now, I'm expecting this to be slightly wrong. But we'll see. We've got a version. It calls um, ham with no arguments. It calls blah with no arguments. And it calls blah with some data. Okay, so it still thinks that's happening. So why is that? Um, we never actually removed anything. We always just added on and appended everything together. So we need to... We need to trim things. Okay. So. Okay, so at the moment, yeah, we're looking at this breakpoint and we're seeing that we're roughly collecting the data that we wanted to be collecting. Um, let's just see what's going on. Uh, sorry, I just uh, went away again. Um, it displays the name of the current function mode line. Oh, nice. That's cool. Oh, yeah, Foo3. Neat. Problem is, it was like this will actually be good when I'm on a decent resolution, but it got pushed way over. Thank you, both of you. Darius Pontepimp for pointing that out. Nice. This one TV is good TV. Then I'll keep going. <laughs> yes, this is my natural habitat in a mess of my own making. Um, okay, so where are we? Oh, God, it's half nine already? That sucks. Okay. Fuck it, just keep going, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go and find that breakpoint again, which was in like functions or something like this. Uh, no, it's gonna be in make function because my files have terrible names. Okay, so what happens next? So we know in body objects that we have the things that we need. And then when we get down to, um, the compiled function result here, I actually want to extract that called function information and shove it in here because I've got a hunch that this is going to be useful for us later. So we'll do called funks here and we'll take the called funks out of body object um, and just shove it into this object. Now this object doesn't have a called funks slot yet. So let's just do called funks from here and go down to um, here and add it in. So yeah, same signature as the other one, that's completely fine. Okay, so now those will be accumulated in those function results. That's good, that's good. So now if we go back to translate, we have this break here. We're gonna call, we're actually name this breakpoint something a little more sensible and call foo. Okay, so now we're in make post process object and we've got the compiled function result. So let's go and see what this has in it. So hopefully it has called funks here, which have the results in. Blah, and this, and that. Okay. So. What I kind of want to do then is go back to make function. So we copy the body object here, which will include all the called funks when we're making code object. And code objects, interesting, gets returned here. I'm not sure what this is yet. 
But basically, I don't, I want, I want each compiled function to accumulate the functions it's called, and only those. So once we get here, I actually don't want to let that um, called functions information in the body object propagate any further. So in my head, I want to do this, which should stop that. And I can't remember if I just compiled that, so let's compile it again. And now we see that it only has one called function and it's called function list. And it's ham, which takes no arguments. And ham has one function in its called arguments list, which is which is nil, which takes no arguments and returns an int. So those are the functions that were called. And everything else wasn't relevant. How the fuck did that work? Okay. So. Um, so that kind of is correct. That's what I want. I think there is a problem with it though. And I can do a quick test to check that. So if we do, let's have a look. QLSL code, uh, make stage. The reason I think that's working is because, okay, it requires a bit of an explanation. Every time that um, you see a call to a function where the argument isn't something that um, GL GLSL can represent, this is what um, uh, Vario does. It creates a new labels, it gets rid of this, and it replaces it with labels, um, and it takes this, And it gets rid of this and it does something like that um, and then does ham right and so what you get here is you lexically capture the variable from the surrounding scope um, but you get a new version of the function which is only used here which doesn't take any arguments and just lexically captures and the rest of the thing just handles this case so it ends up generating a new function specifically for this and so what's happening here is then this is also taking a variable, like this can't happen because we're trying to now pass an SSBO into blah, that doesn't work. So what happens is the same thing again. Um, oops, let's do it like this. This gets removed, this gets done, this gets written, um, and so the co code that ends up compiling looks like this. And a call to, no, hold there. Is that right? Yeah, that. Okay, so yeah, this will be it. So basically it creates inline um, by laying things out like this, it never actually had to pass anything in here. And then the code that handles um, like lexical capture deals with this instead. Because what really happens now is we've just got an SSBO we're calling with slots on. All of this just optimizes away and we get what we want. Um, yeah, so basically there's no longer any unrepresentable things in any of the arguments to functions. So now it just has to handle how this data got here. And that's handled by another bit of code. But um, yeah, so that's what that replaces. So I think the reason we've got the right result in our main functions result is that um, it basically inlined all that code and so it can see the function calls. But I think I can create a case where it fails. So let's do make stage. Uh, oh no, create stage is a new version of this. Uh, kind is vertex. Uh, version is 450, um, and then we have, we're not going to specify any input variables or uniform variables, we're only going to specify code, which is a list of expressions like um, vec4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, does that work? Oh yes, because we're trying to call, we've got to translate it before we try and extract the GLSL code from it. Continue, right, yes, yeah, so that compiles. 
So now we need to add a labels of foo, which takes an x, which is an int, and then returns x, and then we'll do a bar, which takes exactly the same thing, a y, which takes an int, and then it calls foo with y. Is that right? Yes. And then down here, inside the labels form, we'll call bar with 10. Right, so let's just quickly make sure that we get the code. Here we get proper functions which take arguments. So we're not in our crazy case where we're trying to pass SSBOs. So now if we look what we got on our final result here, we can see, oh. Excuse me. We do have bar which takes one argument and it has foo that takes one argument. Well, that worked well. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Um, so if that is working, which it seems to be, which is odd, then I want to find all of the functions. See, this used to be my case. I would get, I get all of the functions where its call count is greater than zero, but this is incorrect. So what I want to do now instead is walk down all of the functions where, which are, okay, so I need to extract all of those functions from, come on, Chris, it's nearly there. It's in the front of my head. Um, I need to do that walk that we were just doing a second ago. Let's just 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 try and do that. Let's um, go back to that break and do another thing that I really love from Common Lisp, which I really miss when I'm anywhere else. As we call foo, we get to here. Um, the argument I'm interested in is the compiled function result. So I'm going to do alt return, which kicks it over to the REPL. Now I'm going to put that into a variable. And now we can just play with it. So what do we want to do with it? Um, in fact, let's inspect it. We just want to get called funks from it. And we want to get all of the functions. We want to get this function and all of the functions that it called recursively. So then we can go, um, this time 38, good. Now we'll check on chat again in a second. Be fun. Um, compiled func. We want to go called funks of compiled func. And we want to. Where is it? I'm being stupid here. So I want to append this to mapping boop over all of those called functions as well. Something like that. So now if we call boop on temp zero, it freaks out because it doesn't know where it is. That's true um, because we're in Vario tests and this is Vario internals. So this is Vario internals boop. And that's good. Okay. Um, it's interesting that the append didn't quite work how I expected there. Oh, I guess I really want map can, don't I? Something like that. Let me just make sure I remember how. No. Oh. Map can is. It's too fucking bright. That's what it is. Map can and map car are locked like map car. Expect that the results of applying the function are combined into a list by use of nconc rather than list. Okay, so each of these things is returning a new list, which is fine. So then we can use nconc, which is destructive, so that's fine. Yeah, I think that's all right. Um, 
or is it? Because we're getting those lists. I don't want to really fuck up any of the lists. Uh, let's just do my pen. There we go. Okay, so that gets us the functions that were actually called from main, which is ham taking no arguments and la taking no arguments, which is good. Um, so, I want to know where this thing is defined. Yeah, but where is it? Um, okay, so we just do all called functions, taking in a compiled object, and that can return. Uh, we don't want to have to keep those boop. All called functions. Okay. Nice. That just works like an accessor that we're going to leave it with the type. Okay. So now we're back in translate and we kind of have to work out what to do next. All functions. So this is all cached compiled functions. Um, what is all functions used for? That's what I'm interested in. Um, it gets all the stem cells from them. It gets all the post-prop objects. I'm wondering if I can just replace that with just the list of functions that are actually called. Because then we don't have to worry about this call count shit or anything, any of this nonsense. So what happens if I just replace this um, with... Oh, crunchy crunch. Um, with main func. Let's do that. Um, let's go down to that call count nonsense here. All functions is now going to only contain functions that were called. And we'll do this. And then we'll go back to the REPL and we'll say foo3 and say continue. And now it's freaking out. Okay, so no applicable method to the generic functions, all functions, when called with arguments. Huh. Did I just do that wrong? I think I did. And I've got this break here as well. Oh yeah, I did. That's not what it's called. Yeah, it was all called functions. Do this. Okay, so we're nearly there. So we've got a couple of problems. First, we've lost the main function because nothing calls the main function. So that's um, easily remedied by having... Um, by taking this and consing the main function onto it. Now we've got our main function back, but we also have one too many signatures. This signature should not be here. Um, so we need to go find what is handling the signatures. Um, and that is kind of interesting. So where is the thing that makes the shader string? Is here. This is doing this silliness with... Uh, remove if call count is zero, blah, blah, blah. That's interesting. Because how did that even get in there? If all functions is just... Is something messing around with all functions? Okay, I'm a bit confused. Let's go into string generation again, and we'll, we'll just make it put another breakpoint here, and see what we've got. Break, uh, gen data string, blah blah, and pass in the post proc object. We've still got time. That's good. We do foo three. We do this, and we have all of our functions here. Now that looks a bit longer. Oh no, three things.
This is the main function. This is the ham function. And this is the blah function. That's good. So there's nothing wrong there. So, and that is in, let's just make sure I'm not going crazy. That is in the all function slot in this object, the post compile process object. So if we do this and go back in here, post proc object, all functions, this version of all functions that runs on post process object, it's yeah, it's just returning that value. So that should be fine. So I don't know what this is for. Oh wait, signatures. This is the actual code for the functions, which was correct. It's this signatures end thing here. This is the problem. Well, it's kind of interesting actually, because what we could do is we could just take this Funk code, let's put it up here. Funk code, funk six is, yeah, let's just remove this. And for each of the functions, we want to get the signature. Um, Oh, last what is this? GLSL code on compiled function result um, and signatures. So okay, let's try that. Funk sigs is not used because we're going to go down here and replace signatures end with it. And I'm going to go back to REPL and we're going to do this. It's got a breakpoint but we continue and now we only have the signatures for the functions that are actually used this looks a lot more like valid code than the old stuff did um, let's go also try this out again this also looks good mm, yep that's okay uh, let's try this Continue. Okay, so this has struct usage in it, and we're getting our struct here, and then we're getting the signature of ham, and ham is here. This is looking actually really good. Um, this takes care at least of the initial problem that um, the uh, Enfiano was having. Uh, there's a few things we got to do. We've got that stupid um, call count stuff that was in the compiler. I need to um, get rid of because that was that was crap. Median, just checked in to see what condition the condition is in. See you next week. Dude, good to see you. Sorry it was, uh, yeah, not CL's MD, but, um, yep. Nobody's lemons, it's Wednesday already, suddenly is. Need to figure out how to popularize conditions and restarts. Yeah, they're cool. I, I, I really like some aspects of Common Lisp's condition system. I really like passing down handlers to things. I'm not... I'm becoming less and less of a fan for certain kinds of code of the of the whole tr like of the whole crazy basically stack unwinding. I just don't like it. I, I don't like this kind of jumping to different parts of the code in that way. Um, I'd rather ret return a return code or crash. I really like crashing. If you crash it, so that's that's one thing where the conditions in CL are really nice because when they're thrown, you're at the you're at the end of the call stack still. Like, it hasn't unwound and got rid of all your context, like in a lot of languages, which are garbage. Or at least very annoying. Okay, so that's interesting. Like, if we just run all the tests... Oh, yeah, we've got that breakpoint in there. So let's get rid of that. Actually, let's just bring up this. Save everything. Um, pull that. Expand. Really? That's not what I wanted. Really? Which was, oh, was it Alt 4? Yeah, Alt 4 expands everything. That's it. Break. Okay, so there's a break. Let's get rid of that. There's a break here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so that's the only breaks. Damaged breaks. 
Um, oh, there is one there. Oh no, that's gone. Was that compiled? Oh, did we leave that breakpoint in the other commit? Boo. That's rubbish. Never mind. Pull two. Okay, so those are the changes we've made so far. If we go back to the REPL and we run them all. Whoa. Okay. Our tests are catching lots of problems. Lots of problems. Holy shit. Okay. And I'm seeing Neil in here as well. Look at that guy. That means we've got print statements left in here somewhere as well. Hopefully ones that we've actually taken out already, but um, yeah, I think what it is is we left a print statement somewhere and then I've gone and um, removed it but haven't recompiled the code, so we've got some kind of loose state there. Not painful though, so let's keep going. So anyway, the failure details, let's start with the values tests. This is where things start getting really hairy. Let's find out all the problems. Tests, values, is it multiple value return? Oh yeah, that, that would be a good place to find issues. Uh, number 16. Okay, so it is saying that it is expecting in the GLSL to find Yes, it's expecting to find this function signature as an out and all this kind of stuff. So let's just take this. Here, the cell code and see what we got wrong. Yeah, so the function's been stripped. That's not good. Why did that not register as called? That suggests that... Oh, I might know why. Uh, come on, where are you? Let's go here. Um, fun call. Compile multi return function call. Doot, doot, doot. Merge compile, blah, blah, blah. So. Look at graph again. Compiled function result. Yeah. Make instance. Oh yeah. There's things with unrepresentable types. No, that's not going to be it. I just want out variables to be. How did that result in that issue? Um, it's a little bit soupy though so are these really the only places that can oh wait a second what is this GLSL to compile or is that okay now this is something else um Okay, for some reason, it hasn't registered that call to um, the function. And the main difference between that and what we normally, like the stuff that does work is that that function takes multiple arguments. So I would have thought Yes, of course. Okay, this is, um, it is to do with called funks, I think. Okay, so when we merge compiled here, we passed in called funks. We did all this stuff. Um, and we don't do that down in compile multi return function call here. How did this not fucking throw a wobbly? Oh, okay, yeah, because it's merge compiled. 
All right, um, let's see what we've got here. So we want to take the arguments, just like the other one. We want to take um, func and get its compiled result. Let's just see if that, ooh, doesn't like that. Undefined function bindings. Okay, then I guess I, oh yeah. Let's just bring up another file here for a second. Yep. Unbalanced parens. Don't be careful when you're copying and pasting. Uh, that's basically it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now the function's there. That looks good. 5am run all tests. Okay, we're down to two. We're down to three tests failing. External function counts. Okay, so external function. Um, equals count two length matches did not return a true type. Let's go and see what it is doing. Um, that is tests are oh, really good if we can fix it in like four minutes. If we can fix all the tests in four minutes, that would be really cool. External functions. And this is freaking out. It's looking, it's saying that there should be a signature for this function. Apparently there isn't. So let's go to the REPL. Let's bring it up. Let's go and get the GLSL code out of this. And what was it looking for? It was looking for something that took a float ham. That looks like this guy. Actually, this is weird. We've got two of them. What the fuck? Okay. Oh, uh, we get. Oh no, stupid boy. Look at this. Two calls to the same re re function return in two <laughs> results in two signatures. So that's really dumb. Um, but hopefully. All of the compiled function results should be uh, you compile the same a call to the same function, it should result in the same compiled object because it should be yeah it should be handling that. So I'm hopefully we could do oh what would it be what would it be? Um, let's just go to. Come on, something to do with types. Uh, no. Internal types, there we go. Um, all functions, come on, where is it? Translate. All called functions, that was it. Where is it? It's here. What happens if we just go remove duplicates? And just to be sure, let's say the test is EQ. <laughs> there we go. Okay, things are behaving. Um, so let's go like... Boom! All tests pass. Very nice. Okay, so all that tells us is that the like Vario itself isn't freaking out. And we've got two minutes left. Fuck yeah. I know what we can do. Um, this is where things will likely go wrong. Um, because... One nice thing about Keppel tests is if you've already loaded Vario tests, when you run Keppel's test suite, it will go through and compile all the source code that was produced by Vario's tests. And that like actually compiles it on GL, which means um, that we get to see if it was valid or not. This will catch all the cases we've generated in valid GLSL, or will catch most of the cases, you know. If we omitted something really ridiculous, it should cache it. Catch it, not cache it. Oh, that would be so good if this works, though. And then after the stream, I can spend doing cleanup. Um, 5 a.m. run all tests. That's... Holy shit, 600 tests have just passed. That compiled everything. That's really cool. That's a really good sign. Okay. Yeah, boy. No, let's not do that. Uh, we're... I was about to say, we're not some Twitch streamer. Yes, we are. That's exactly what we're doing right now. Um, okay. Focus. What have we done? Um, we've fixed that specific bug, but uh, we still need to do cleanup, actually. So I won't commit this. Actually, won't commit. I don't know. We'll, let's just do a work in progress. I'll squash this commit in a minute. Um, squash me. Um, all tests are pass and Amphiano's 
bug is fixed. Still need to remove all the old call count crap. I don't know why I didn't um, do it this way to begin with, because it's way simpler um, than the other shit I had. But so that's it. Um, that went okay. That was all right. That actually felt like a stream again. So yes, um, in this last seconds, any more for any more? Any questions? Any comments? Any anything? Um, and if not, we are done. Um, so yeah, all I need to do now is go and basically kill this guy. There's a thing called call count, and it's wrapped around this compiler all over the place. So let's. Yeah. Oh, it's not too bad. It's only a few places. Ah, uh, this is the start of my traits code. No, I'm gonna if I'm gonna do traits in Vario, I'm gonna really have to rethink how the uh, type stuff is done. Um, what is this signatures? I don't know if anything uses this now. Oh no, taking the environment. I don't think anything does. Get rid of that. I'm just gonna. And yeah, we are done. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. So one more stream next week, and then we have to do other stuff until mid-January. Yeah, that's right. So um, I'm not sure what we'll do next week. I, I, As much as I remember someone saying, oh, let's do some crazy graphics thing next week. That would be really cool. I would love to do that. But this, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. And the reason is I'm just so low on energy. Generally, when I'm when I'm getting to this point, that anything new is gonna be um, is gonna be unlikely to happen within two hours. So, um, yes, we will do the last stream. It's not gonna be so razzle dazzle, um, but we'll chill out. We'll do some coding, and um, yeah, then we'll sign off until next year. Um, I really would just want to thank again. Like I'll uh, we'll say this next week for sure, but. Uh, yeah, thanks for continuing to tune in. Uh, thanks to everyone on YouTube who isn't able to make these live. Um, there are far too many views on YouTube for a little Lisp, um, a bunch of Lisp videos. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Super cool. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's a lot of fun to do, and I'm really looking forward to actually doing this again with like brain power back and all that kind of stuff and hopefully next year i'll have a game which will be a lot a lot of fun and um i'll show you guys obviously when it's when it's available um in fact i'll probably drop you folks a, actually i don't know how i'd do that i don't know um i'll probably uh like if, if you're interested in the game there's a discord channel um for tailspire i'm not I can't, let's see if i can remember what it's called See, the thing is, we we don't control the Discord. It's set up by it was set up by fans, uh, as far as I know. Yeah, there's um, a Discord for Bouncy Rock. Um, let's try this. Bim. Apparently, that's how you invite people to the server. That is the Discord server. Um, so. Yeah, pop along to there. We will be... It's going to be a closed alpha. Um, so... Yeah, what am I trying to say? It's going to be a closed alpha. So we're going to be putting up registrations, stuff. Um, we'll put links to that on the Discord. And definitely, like, the first people to see it will be the people on the Discord and the people in the mailing list. You can sign up to the mailing list at uh, bouncyrock.com or Tailspire. Let's actually just... Oh, fuck it. I'm just going to give you some links. Links, links, links. Uh, Tailspire... Yeah, tailspire.com um, has the mailing list on it. Sign up for that if you don't want to be hanging out in the Discord. Come down to the Discord if you want to. Um, yeah, basically I post... Uh, I have posts going up every day talking about what I'm up to. And we're putting screenshots and music samples and things like that as we can. Um, and yeah, 
you'll be the first to get invites to the to the alpha. That's all. Thank you so much. I will catch you next week. Have a great time. Until then, see ya.